Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and welcome back to 3D Collisions in Game Maker. So the last video was a bunch of setup for uh, getting spatial hashes implemented in this 3D collision system, and hopefully today I will be finishing implementing spatial hashes in this 3D collision system. Uh, this may go on for a bit long, but I don't want to stretch this out into a third video. Fortunately, we've got the general shape of um, what we need spatial hashes to do uh, all planned out and we, we did a bunch of chores last time to make uh, this go hopefully rather smoothly. I did do one thing off recording since the last video and that was simply to add the debug draw uh, code to the spatial hash and the spatial hash nodes. It's pretty simple. We're just going to draw our uh, uh, our debug rectangles around the, uh, the bounding box of the spatial hash itself and also uh, with you know, everything inside it. It's not that exciting. So let's, um, I suppose the easiest place to get started and the code that will be undoubtedly simplest to implement will be the spatial hash node add and remove. So the, uh, the list of objects inside a spatial hash node is simply an array and, uh, adding and removing something from that, um, from that list is as simple as saying array push, uh, self dot objects and the object that we want to add. Um, it may behoove you to first check if the object exists in the array. Uh, for example, with the array get index function, you can figure out if the object already exists in the array. But uh, the way that I'm going to set up, assuming that you uh, correctly use the add and remove method uh, only on the spatial hash and don't mess with anything inside it, that won't be a concern. And lastly, there is the, uh, lastly, not really. Uh, but next there is the array remove method. And for this, I am going to say var index uh, where this object lives in this array is going to be array get index self dot objects uh, and the object that we're trying to remove. And then we can array delete uh, from self dot objects, uh, the index and uh, one because we only want to to remove one element. And once again, uh, you may want to check if index equals equals, or I guess not equals negative one before doing this, but uh, the way that I'm going to set this up, um, you shouldn't ever be allowed to add a duplicate or uh, remove something that already, um, remove something that doesn't exist. Okay, that's uh, that's gonna be spatial hash node um, add and remove. Um, check object and check ray for the nodes themselves is also gonna be pretty simple, but I feel like I should talk about adding and removing on the spatial hash as a whole first, and uh, also what some of these other um, methods up here are going to be for. So let me commit this, and we can uh, we can deal with these three functions. Let's start at the top. So the hash function. So every cell, every chunk in the spatial hash grid that we're going to attempt to add something to is going to get an ID, and you can make the ID as simple or as fancy as you want, but um, I'm just gonna make it. I'm just gonna make it simple so that if you have a cell with a certain coordinate, uh, let's say one, two, three, uh, then the uh, the ID, the hash ID of the um, of the coordinate is is just gonna be that. This is just going to be a unique ID for every you know every chunk in the grid. If two chunks have the same ID, then it stands to reason that they point to the same location. Um, the way that I would have done this has changed a fair amount over the last year or so of GameMaker because GameMaker has been rather interested in adding different string concatenation functions recently. Um, classically, you would simply say something like return string x uh, plus a comma plus string y plus a comma plus string z. Um, in this case, that's not too bad. Concatenating strings like this is kind of a pain, but you do it once and you're done with it. Uh, starting in GameMaker 2022.11, uh, we have the ability to uh, to do some fancy string templating, and we can instead say return uh, string uh, in curly braces 0, curly braces 1, curly braces 2, x, y, z, and this will essentially um, this will essentially format the string. This will do some fancy string interpolation and accomplish the same thing. And starting in uh, GameMaker 2023.4. Uh, we now have the ability to instead simply say return uh, dollar sign and then x and then y and then z. 
Whoa, 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 wait a minute. This is a little error that's gone unnoticed uh, for the rest of the video and also the rest of the next video. But uh, the hash function needs, needs commas in between those numbers to separate them. If you do not separate the numbers, then it's possible for some hashes of different, different chunks to map onto the same hash and not be unique. For example, so 1120 and 1120 and also 1120 would all give the same hash, which is not ideal. Anyway, don't be like me and remember to put the commas there. Uh, we now have the ability to instead simply say return uh, dollar sign and then x and then y and then z. And since I am using GameMaker 2023.4 uh, for this project, I'm, I'm just going to do that because it is simpler and it makes me happy. Next, uh, I'm going to say get bounding chunk. And for every object that we tried to add or remove from the spatial hash, we are going to need to know what its bounds are, uh, what its encompassing bounding box is going to be. And this was probably what I spent the majority of the last video on was working out a get min and get max for all of these uh, 3D collision shapes. And uh, we are going to use that in the get bounding chunk uh, method for the spatial hash. Uh, first, I'm going to say object min is going to equal object dot uh, get min. And I think there's actually one thing that I uh, needed to do, but I forgot. And I'll get to that in a moment. Of uh, our object max is going to be object dot get max. And uh, let me go into the, where does call object live? Okay, so call object itself does not have a get min or get max method. Uh, what I'm going to want to do is define one of those, uh, get min. And this is simply going to return self.shape.get min. So whatever the, whatever the shape contained by one of these objects are, um, the get min and get max methods for the object will just, uh, We'll just basically pass the pass the request on to the to the collision shape. If you really want to get cursed, uh, this is Game Maker, and you can simply say self get min is going to be equal to, or rather, um, these wouldn't be able to be static, but you could simply reassign the get min and get max methods like that. Uh, I think that is a little bit too cursed for me. I will not be doing that. How many times do I have to control Z? There we go. All right, I'm losing my mind. Where were we? So object min and object max, uh, these are going to be vector threes representing the minimum and maximum of the, uh, the bounding box for the, um, the object in question. Uh, you may remember that two of the collision shapes um, may not return anything for get min and get max because uh, they are infinite in one or more directions, those being the rays and the planes. So first I'm going to check if object uh, min equals equals undefined, then we can simply return undefined. And this is going to be a bit of a uh, an indication to our future selves that um, we can't use the regular bounding, bounding chunk and spatial hash logic for whatever shape this is going to be. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to return a, a new call ab from min max. So this is our, our nice helper function. Uh, to create an axis aligned bounding box with the alternative uh, definition of two uh, minimum and maximum points rather than a center and a size. And um, we could just say a new vector three, uh, object min.x, object min.y, object min.z, and same thing for the maximum over here. Except I don't actually want um, the bounding chunk to be defined in terms of just any old world space coordinates for this object. I want this to be defined in terms of chunk coordinates. So if, uh, if our chunk size is, let's say, 100, uh, then I'm going to actually want the, uh, basically the coordinates of the chunks that it lives in, because that's what's going to be relevant when we insert something into the spatial hash. So for an object whose minimum and maximum points span from 75 to 150, I'm going to want to divide those coordinates by the chunk size and round it down. So 75 divided by 100 is going to be uh, 0.75. Rounded down, it's going to be 0. 150 divided by 100 is going to be 1.5. Rounded down, it's going to be 1. And those are going to be our relevant um, bounding chunk minimum and maximum uh, for that object. So uh, to do that, it's pretty simple. We're just going to uh, take object minimum and maximum divided by self.chunk size and round it down with the floor function. Uh, alternatively, 
you could use integer division, self.chunk size, um, instead, and your code might be a little bit more concise, but I don't know if everybody uh, automatically is gonna like recognize the div operator in GameMaker, because it's a little bit on the obscure side. Uh, so I'm just going to go, I'm just gonna use regular floating point division and the floor function. Uh, that does raise a point, uh, which is that if you really, really like vector math, you could implement things like floor and seal and round functions for uh, vectors. And and then you could just say like object min divided by chunk size and then call the floor method on that, but I'm not gonna get that far into vector arithmetic. So that's the get bounding chunk method. And lastly, uh, get chunk, which takes an x, y, and z as a parameter. Uh, this is going to be a simple matter of uh, return self dot chunks. Um, with the, uh, the struct accessor, because we are going to look up a key in in our struct. Uh, the key in question is going to be self.hash function, and the parameters that the hash function takes is going to simply be x, y, and z. And this is really just going to be a shorthand for looking up looking up an entry in the, the lookup table of chunks um, with that given ID. Uh, and that's just going to be more convenient than typing out this whole thing every time. Okay. Uh, I think that would be a good place to mark another commit. Uh, what do my notes have me doing next? Uh, this feels like a good place to do the add and later remove uh, methods for, for spatial hashes. So when we add something to the spatial hash as a whole, we are going to first get the uh, get the bounding box for that object, get its minimum and maximum, and we are going to add that object to every chunk in the spatial hash, which uh, is covered by uh, that object's bounding box. So we can start off by saying var bounds is going to be uh, self .get bounding chunk um, for the object that we're going to add. Uh, there is the uh, there is the special case of if bounds equals equals undefined um, uh, if you're trying to add a plane or array to the to the spatial hash. But I will, hmm, do I want to get to that later? I feel like I should cover that special case later. Um, for convenience's sake, I'm going to say object min is going to be uh, bounds.getMin. Um, actually, I'm going to call that bounds min. Bounds max is bounds.getMax. Um, I'm also going to want to handle the case of if um, the object already exists in the spatial hash, which I mentioned earlier, but I will also um, cover that at a later point, I think. And now we're simply going to add it. So this is going to be everybody's favorite structure um, in computer science, and that is going to be the triple nested for loop. Uh, so I'm going to say first var i is going to be object now bounds min dot x uh, i is less than or equal to object um, come on bounds max dot x i plus plus syntax highlighting is going to be all messed up because I, I typed that out in English didn't I um, we're going to need to do that three times for the x y and z dimensions so we can say i j and k um, this is this is so tedious to type out. Normally I'd cut that kind of thing out, but I think this time I'm going to make you all suffer with me. Um, I, J, K, I, J, K, I, J, K, uh, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. All right. Looks good to me. So uh, nominally, this is going to be as simple as saying uh, self.get chunk, um, come on, self.getChunk, self i, j, and k, and we can say this is var uh, chunk is going to be at that location. And then we can simply say chunk uh, dot add the object. But it's unfortunately not going to be quite that simple because um, until you add something, um, the chunks won't actually exist, so this will just return undefined the first time you try to add anything to the spatial hash, and then uh, you're going to try and call the method on undefined, and then your game's going to go roll over and die. 
So uh, we're going to first want to check to see if um, if chunk is equal equals undefined. And if this is true, then we're going to have to first add ourselves a, um, a new chunk. And this is going to be, um, let's see, we're going to have to create a chunk. Uh, so a new, new spatial hash node. Um, it's going to take a bound as a parameter to the constructor. And this is going to be a, uh, an access along bounding box, uh, as these nodes often have. We can define that. And we're going to want to, uh, to use the new call ab from min max uh, function to get one of those from a minimum and maximum points. And to get the minimum and maximum spanning points of one of these spatial hash nodes, uh, we can basically do this in reverse. So whereas uh, to go from, uh, as I called it, world space to chunk space, uh, we took the coordinate divided, divided by the chunk size and rounded it down. Um, to go from, um, to go the other way from chunk space to world space, um, we can just uh, multiply our ijk coordinate uh, by the chunk size, and then that will be our um, our min and max coordinates. So I can say, let's say var uh, coords is going to be a new vector three uh, composed of simply i, j, and k. Um, var chords min can be chords dot uh, mole multiply by self dot chunk size, and var chords max can be chords dot mole self dot chunk size, and then we can uh, add self dot chunk size to offset us by one in the positive direction, and that is going to be our bounding uh, bounding coordinates for the uh, the new chunk. Um, new call ab from min max is going to be this. Uh, we construct a new spatial hash node from that bounds. Uh, we can set it to that to that variable. And lastly, we are going to simply need to uh, to insert it into the uh, the lookup table of chunks. And in hindsight, I probably should have done this the first time, but um, it would make a lot of sense to have a basically an analog of add chunk, which essentially does the opposite of get chunk, and also uh, remove chunk just in case you ever want to take a uh, take a node out of the spatial hash. Um, you could set the value to undefined. Um, I think I'm actually not going to do that, and I'm going to go all the way and make sure the key is actually removed. So we're going to say uh, remove a remove a value from uh, the chunks lookup table, and the value is going to be uh, that hash. I think another uh, change game maker recently made is uh, you no longer have to say variable struct remove. You can just say struct remove. That's a change that's going to take me a long time to get used to because I've been doing it this for a long time. The functions do the same thing. Uh, it's just a just a shorter name. I uh, I realize that that variable name is already being used for something, so I shouldn't do that. So now, as far as making sure that a chunk actually exists before we try to add to it goes, uh, we're, we're all settled. Uh, there's a few more things that need to be done, though. So uh, the spatial hash as a whole uh, also knows its bounding size. And um, this is mostly just used for debug draw, admittedly, but uh, it's also rather important when it comes to ray casting. So it's not something that you can exactly just like skip out on, um, unfortunately. Hey. And uh, when you uh, when you add a chunk, because this is something that's only going to be relevant when you add a chunk, um, if self dot bounds equals equals undefined. Um, so if your bounding box has not yet been defined, uh, we can simply say self dot bounds is going to be a new call ab from min max, and this is going to be the uh, the exact same coordinates, uh, the exact same coordinates as the first uh, spatial hash node that you add. Um, if there already is something in the spatial hash, then you're going to want to update the size of the bounds if uh, the new cell that you added is outside the uh, 
outside the original bounds. And the way that you would do that would be to say self.bound equals uh, likewise a new call ab from min max, but we're gonna have to do a little bit more math to figure out what that min and max actually is gonna be. Okay, so we could manually do this by, by doing a bunch of like mins and maxes on components of a new vector three, or this is another thing that I really wish I, I did last time. I had it in my notes that I wanted to do this last time too, but I uh, did not remember. Or we can say, um, add a few more methods to the vector classes. And we can say min is going to be a function that takes a vector three and it's gonna return a new vector three, um, which is going to have an X of the minimum of self.x and vec3.x. Um, and it's going to return the lower values uh, between ourselves and the incoming vector three and the max uh, method is gonna do the same for the maximum values. All right, you know what? I, I mentioned these earlier and then I said it, they weren't critical, but while I'm screwing with the vector classes, fine. Just because I've got so, so much, much vector math in here already, so I might as well, I might as well not skimp out. We're also gonna get floor, seal, and round. I guess I'll add it to vector four as well. I didn't intend for these vector classes to turn into all this, but sometimes it just happens. Anyway, um, the far easier way to, to do what I was about to type out the long way in uh, updating the bounding box of the spatial hash is going to be a uh, new call add from min max. The min is gonna be self.bounds.get min. Um, we're going to compare that against um, the chords min value, and we're going to uh, return a new vector three containing whatever is the lower coordinates of, of those two things, and we're going to do the same thing uh, with the uh, the maximum value. So self dot bounds dot get max uh, dot max, and feather feather would like me to know the evaluation order of function calls on an argument list is not guaranteed between platforms, but that's okay because both of these are pure functions. And Feather just doesn't know that. All right, so that is going to be our um, our updated bounds for uh, for the spatial hash as a whole. And there is one more thing I need to do, and that is going to be to uh, basically have the spatial hash remember which objects have already been added to it and where. So this was something I didn't really have to worry about in the KD trees because by their very nature, each node in the trees had a list of objects that were contained within them, and if an object was contained within a node, it could recursively search um, its child nodes and figure out pretty quickly uh, which nodes and um, which nodes an object existed in before you went to add or remove it. But the spatial hash has no such uh, has no such design like that. So I'm going to have to keep track of objects that exist within it myself. So I'm going to make use of the object record. Um, the object record is uh, this is actually something that I kind of made up myself. Uh, this is not something that um, explicitly found examples of when I was researching spatial hashes, but um, we can we can get a unique ID uh, for every object that is not going to change. And you could either like randomly generate a unique ID for objects uh, when they're created, or you can use an old favorite trick of mine, uh, which is going to be var object ID is going to be a string of the pointer to the object. The pointer function is a little known feature in GameMaker that will return the exact location in memory where uh, a struct um, can be found. And it's almost never useful um, to you as a GameMaker developer because you can't do fancy pointer tricks with it. But you can use it to get a unique ID of a struct um, because a struct's location in memory is never going to change. And it's, it's always going to be unique for every struct. Hey. And I'm simply going to make use of that and say, uh, Celta object object record um, with the struct accessor for the object ID is going to be equal to um, uh, what is it up here the uh, the bounding the bounding box of that object. All right, so we can take the uh, take the bounds that were um, figured out all the way at the top of the function, and we can insert. 
the object into um into the object record. And later on, when we want to figure out where an object exists in the spatial hash, we can do the same thing in reverse. So we can take the uh, the string or the pointer to the object, we can look it up in the object record, and we can get the information like that. Okay, so that is basic adding something to the uh, to the spatial hash. That feels like a good place to make a commit. So firstly, uh, if the object already exists in the spatial hash, uh, we have a way to figure that out, and that is going to be to look up self .object record. Um, and we can look up the string of the pointer uh, of the object. As I said, we can basically do what I just did a minute ago in reverse. And as I, um, as I say these words out loud right now, I realize it might be nice to have another helper method uh, for a spatial hash, uh, which is simply contains. And that's going to uh, just be a nice, easy function call, which returns a true false um, whether or not an object exists in the spatial hash. Could be a nice convenient thing to access from the outside uh, once in a while. So um, if the object is contained within the spatial hash, we can say, uh, how about location is going to be self.object record, um, string of the pointer to the object. If you really want to software engineer this, um, you could abstract this into further methods, but I think I think I've gone far enough uh, with the contains method. And if um, there are two things that can happen now, so if the object's uh, bounds, if the object's bounding chunks are exactly the same as um, whatever's already in the object record, then there's really no point in adding it again, and I'm just going to exit early. Um, and if the object's bounding chunks are different than whatever is in the object record then I'm going to first remove it and then re-add it. So we're essentially going to update the object's position. So we can say if um, location dot, uh, what's it, get min, uh, and we can check if this equals. Uh, vectors do have an equals method, don't they? I'm pretty sure I gave them an equals. I'm getting to the point where I can't remember what I have and haven't added yet, but we do indeed have an equals. Uh, so if the locations get min equals the bounds min of the object and location dot get max dot equals the bounds max of the object. Um, so that'll be the first case that I mentioned. So that'll be the case where the object's position is the same. I really should comment comment this chord more than I have been doing. We can simply return early in this case. And if that is not the case, uh, we can self.remove uh, the object first. So if the object's location has changed, uh, we're going to remove its old record, and then we're just going to proceed and re-add it. And I think that's all I need to do for um, if an object is already contained. Uh, the last special case that I need to handle for adding to the spatial hash is going to be um, uh, infinite objects, so mostly planes. And if you, for whatever reason, wanted to add array, uh, that would be another case. So if the bounds equals undefined, uh, first we can check array get index um, in the self infinite in, what did I call it? It's not showing up in code help. Uh, planes, okay, I did not call it like infinite objects. That's what I called it in my notes. I guess I named it planes here because most of the time that's what those are gonna constitute. Um, we can say if this um, is uh, equals equals negative one, so if the object does not exist in that list yet, we can simply array push onto that list. Otherwise, we're not going to do anything that already exists in that list. And likewise, uh, we don't have any business. Um, we don't have any business dealing with the actual chunks in the spatial hash for a plane. Uh, so we're just going to return early. I guess technically, instead of making this just an array, uh, this could be a, um, a spatial hash node with like undefined bounds. And you could still use the add and remove and whatever methods on it. I don't know.
again, if you really wanted to software engineer this, you could make some changes to the way that I've been writing my code, but for most purposes, I think this is good enough. So that is going to be the add method for the spatial hash. This has really been going on a long time. I've been recording for 50 minutes, and the only like majorly important method that I've filled in so far is add. And we still have remove, check object, and check ray. Uh, remove is going to be somewhat lengthy. It's not going to be as lengthy as add. Uh, check object is not going to be lengthy at all, and check ray is going to be a lot of math. And I know I said I wanted to, I wanted to get through all of this in one video, but I also don't want to like die of old age before I finish editing it. So I think I am going to cut this off now. Oh god. So if you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Look for the 0.33 release. Um, I have not been remembering to put all these on separate branches like I meant to. I think I can fix that. Um, I think I can do some git magic and say like create branch from this commit. That sounds like a future me problem. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, usually regarding the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, such as this, and one Let's Make a Game, currently a 3D wizard game in which I am using my own 3D collision system, taking that out for a test drive. Uh, so if any of that appeals to you, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. I will definitely thank you because as you can probably tell, these videos do take a lot of work to make. Uh, otherwise, I hope you all found this useful. And I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Sindra Larson, Manta Ray, Harold Gidry, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Army Armbuster for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.